In many practical situations, we don't need to know exactly what is going on in a flow. We only need some global measures. For example, on an aeroplane, one might want to know the lift and the drag. And if I call the lift L, one tends to define non-dimensional coefficients. The relevant one here is the lift coefficient, CL, which is defined as the lift L divided by a half rho V squared, where V is the speed of the surrounding gas, times an area, which, for example, could be the surface area of the wings. And if the drag is given the symbol D, then the natural non-dimensional number is the drag coefficient, defined as D divided by a half rho V squared times the area. And typically, these coefficients, such as CL and CD, depend on properties of the flow, such as the Mach number, if it's a compressible flow, i.e. a high-speed flow, the Reynolds number, the angle of attack, and features such as surface roughness. Now I'm going to focus here on drag, and there are two components to drag, skin friction and form drag. We've met them both already. Skin friction is the momentum of the free stream that is lost through the boundary layer, and the form drag is caused by separated boundary layers, and it is due to the low pressure region that is behind a bluff body. So if you consider the flow around a cylinder, at the front of the cylinder, where the boundary layer is attached, we have skin friction drag, while behind the cylinder, we have a low pressure region, and the difference in pressure between the back of the cylinder and the corresponding region at the front of the cylinder causes form drag. And for this sort of body, which is not streamlined, there is low skin friction, but high form drag. On the other hand, if we consider the flow around a streamlined airfoil, there is no separation of the back, and therefore no form drag, and all the drag is caused by skin friction.